So we're all set to go for our first fight of the evening. It will be Montel Griffin against Jose Luis Rivera for the IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. It should be a good fight. The fighters have not made their ring walks yet. We're waiting for them momentarily to make their moves. It'll be Jose Luis Rivera with a record of 18 and 2, one no contest, 14 KOs, taking on the more experienced Montel Griffin with a record of 38 and 3, 27 KOs. He hails from Chicago, Illinois. When you talk about the fighters, it matches up to be a pretty good fight. What do you think, Bobby, about the competition here? Well, I think it's a solid fight. I think Griffin's come back off some things where he was a little frustrated and he's got his head set. He said now his body's good, but his mind matches and he's going to be real dangerous. He may be at his very best right now. And now we see Jose Luis Rivera, ranked number 10 in the IBC. Well, he's got a, a brand new corner, a brand new trainer. And they said, listen, this guy used to come straight in. We got to give him angles. We got to give him a way to get in without getting hit like he used to. Well, that's very good to do. Let's see if he learned a lesson. And if he did, what effect he will have on Griffin. Well, let's talk about his style. He likes to work inside. He's a strong, hard-working, physical type fighter. He likes to work inside and best work to the body. When you talk about his weaknesses, Bobby, he's never been more than eight rounds in his career. And he's fought kind of throughout his career. Well, you know, it's very important to go the, go the rounds in the ring. Sure, if you do it in sparring, it's one thing, but to do it in an actual fight is something else. There's a confidence factor. There's always a worry for a fighter who hasn't gone, and this is a competition. This is a step up. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's some tremendous atmosphere here. I expect it to be more like the times when we are in uh, perhaps Japan, or uh, the places in Kuala Lumpur and Jakarta at the Ali fights, but this crowd is alive here in China. And, and it's not half in yet because it's raining so hard outside. They're going to have to swim in, but you know, they're, pouring, they're coming in a little at a time, and this will be filled by the time Ali comes in. Uh, it'll be wild when Ali comes in. Of course, it's Layla Ali, not Muhammad Ali, but nonetheless, she has the big name. So Jose Luis Rivera gets a big cheer from the crowd, and there's the man of the hour looking to win the vacant IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. That's a 175-pound division. Montel Ice Griffin. Had an extensive amateur career, 92 Olympic teams. He lost to Thorsten May. His style is, well, he's the type of guy that likes to work inside. Bobby, what else do we know about him as a fighter? Well, he's short for a light heavyweight, but he's a very quick boxer counterpuncher. He has excellent defensive skills, very hard to hit cleanly and hard to hit two times in a row. And although he is not very tall, he can box very well from the outside, and he moves real well, goes to the head and body in combination. I think he's a good, solid threat. In the in Barcelona Olympics, let me tell you, he was the first of many of our fighters that got shafted by a new system. He lost when, when his opponent, May, was cut so badly it would have been stopped anyplace, and they took three points away from him because he used his head to bob and weave. This is the first fatality of the Barcelona Olympics where our team got creamed by all new rules and a computer that didn't work. Well, well you know, they use all these old men with the computers it that didn't work. to keep score. You know what they should do, Freddie? They ought to take a bunch of the 10-year-olds that used to play in those <laughs> Game Boys they to do, do the scoring. We're going to take a look at the tail of the tape, and it will tell us a few things. Bobby mentioned it, that Griffin's a lot shorter. Well, he's five inches shorter. He's a half pound heavier. He's four years younger, and he has a three-inch shorter reach than his opponent, Jose Luis Rivera. So everything is sort of in Rivera's favorite. Here's the rules. The 10-point must scoring system. Three judges score the fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Before the end of four rounds, it's a technical draw if there's an accidental headbutt at the end of four rounds we go to the scorecards those are the rules that will be contesting the fights under tonight here and one joe now we're set to go for our bilingual introductions of our ring announcer kevin kong and the very classy jimmy lennon jr再次欢迎大家来到天河体育馆观看国际职业拳击大赛现在我们的现场正在向全国通过卫星向美国直播比赛的实况这是首次在中国进行的国际职业拳击比赛现在国际拳击理事会轻重量级的争霸赛就要开
Great Wall International Sports Media, Anthony Chan, George Chung Productions, and Showtime Championship Boxing in association with Paps Blue Ribbon and Caesars Palace. This championship attraction is sanctioned by the International Boxing Council. The president is Joseph Blackie Gennaro, supervisor in attendance, Harry Michelle. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, Ronald Greenlee, Joe O'Neill, and Paul Silverman with our referee in charge of the bout, Bernie Provato. Then all right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBC Light Heavyweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, and fighting out of his home of Cleveland, Ohio. He weighed in at already 174 and one half pounds. His record stands at 18 wins, two losses, one no contest, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jose Luis Rivera. Hongjiao的选手是来自美国芝加哥蒙泰尔格里芬，全台绰号“冷冰冰”。今年三十岁，战绩是三十八胜三负，二十七次击倒对方获胜。前WBC青重量级世界冠军，争夺世界冠军的
Well, that's Griffin's fault. He's, he's standing flat-footed, letting the guy coming in, and he's happy to jab and counter-punch, and that counter-jab is pretty effective, except he had his hand turned over, Bobby. You know about that. If your hand's twisted over like that, you have no power on the jab. Well, sometimes you over-twist, but, you know, it's one of those things where right now what Griffin's doing is trying to make Rivera, as he's charging, run into that jab, which will double the impact and set up his other combinations, like that hook. Nice hook, it missed, but his intention was good. If he came back with a right hand, he'd have been better off. Big, tall, Jose Luis Rivera in the red trunks to the left of your screen. That's Montel Griffin with his back to you, to the right of your screen, and the colors of the American flag here in China. And he's, he said, you know, height is no pro. I never have fought anybody who was shorter than me. So uh, this is no problem for him. In the meantime, he just landed a very good right hand, did Griffin. When you take a look at the ring record of Montel Griffin, you know, other than the famous fights with Roy Jones Jr., he hasn't exactly got a who's who in the boxing on his uh, record uh, of wins either. And he lost to a guy by the name of Eric Harding down in Miami, Florida, in your territory, Bertie. Yep. Hey, whoa, stop, stop, stop. He just wasn't in shape. He didn't look good at all in that fight. We're in round one. It's scheduled for 12. You see the time remaining inside of 22 seconds to go, and this is the first round of a 12-round affair. So even though Griffin is short and he does have, doesn't have great reach, he boxes very well from the outside. Good head movement, good body movement. His speed's real good, so he can offset that height deficit with speed. Rivera not using his height advantage at all because he hooks. He does a double jab. Now he's putting a little bit of pressure on, and watch how quickly Griffin ties him up. There's the bell ending round number one. We're listening to the corners. We get louder with that hammer. We get louder with that hammer. I know it. Yeah, and the radio. Thanks, folks. You know those little things, David. Hi, guys. Okay. Now, listen. Control this one of the hammer. Oh, yeah. If you don't, don't take, you don't have to take two steps. Just take one step back and run him into something, okay? Okay? Use the left hand. Make him work. Make him get past the left hand. Okay. Just time it. I want you to hit him in the body a little bit, but I want you to run him in the jab this, this, this next go around, okay? okay? Now, once you... That double jab is working excellent, but you're jabbing and you're standing in front of him. No, I remember. We're supposed to be moving. I don't know. To the left. Yeah. Jab with the left and move to that's the left. That's it. That's it. Okay? Now, you have to remember this. You have to remember this, right? He's working that counter punch hook. You have to stay away from that. Okay. No, I would not. You hurt? Okay. You have to stay away from that. Let's go with the corners. Let's go. There's that bell we talked about. It has a real thin sound to it on top of the fact that it's uh, not loud. It's very thin. No resonance to it at all, so it's hard to hear. I think they need a bigger hammer. <laughs> yeah. But when this place gets filled with 10,000 roaring people, that's going to be hard to hear. So let's go back to this. Well, hopefully with the bad weather outside, we will have 10,000 on hand because they really were excited about uh, Leila Ali fighting here tonight. But right now, we've got the IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. Montel Griffin, who won the first round, decked out in the red, white, and blue, taking on Jose Luis Rivera with a pretty fair country record of 18-2 and two coming in here. And, and Oscar Squires told him what we, we've been saying. Don't stand in front of him. Give him angles. Punch and go off. And still he can't do it. He said, oh, yes, but he isn't doing it. There was a real nice one-two by Rivera, but he, lay, he just stayed there, laid his head out there, and Griffin came back with a double left hook to counter him. Break, break, stop! You know, it's so hard to teach something in the gym and then do it in practice. I mean, he's doing, he's fighting the way he always fights. He hasn't changed at all. Well, Rivera is not fighting like a guy that's five inches taller. You see the way he bends over the trunk and he dips that neck down? He's making an easy target for Griffin because he stands right in front of him, giving him no side-to-side -side movement. And Griffin can do just about as he pleases when uh, Rivera throws the lazy left. He can come right through it. And that uppercut right, right there because the left hand, he slipped the punch, a little bit of movement by the more experienced Griffin. He slipped it and bang, he nailed him with that uppercut. All right, break, break, stand back, stand back. See, the defensive moves that Griffin have are, has are so superior to what Rivera's used to that he's not able to time him at all. On the inside, any, as well as the outside, shorter man winning on the outside, shorter man almost always winning on the inside. As that jab as he plods forward does Rivera, but it's the jab of Montel Griffin that's getting through. Now he sludge hammers him in the back. See, some of what uh, Rivera's doing, too, is he's coming in so close that he's, he's losing his own leverage. He's shortening the distance too far that he can't work from inside there. Only Griffin's going to be affected that close. You know, Bobby, in a lot of ways you can discredit Rivera, but that little slip uh, uh, movement that Griffin has when he comes in makes the jab of uh, Rivera totally ineffective, and then Griffin counters him inside beautifully. 
Well, somewhere along the way, there's a matter of speed. The jab is running in kind of slow, methodical, and Griffin's speed and reflexes are better than the jab. Freddie, we got a cut situation there, at least a bad, bad bruise on that left eye. Well, yeah, he's already got a little bit of blood on it. It's under the eye, not over the eye, but you can see it's starting to swell up, and that's going to be a problem uh, as this goes. His main problem is, is his jab is much slower uh, than Griffin, and Griffin is tattooing him in counter punches. A big left hook that time. Almost took him off his feet. His, knee, his uh, knees are still there. His legs are all right, but he gets nailed with a good left hook. Oh. Montel is working slowly but accurately toward busting him up, and that's that's what he wants to do, and that's what he's doing. See, he's so hard to hit. You see him lean out of the way of the punch and then land two, and there again, in and out, in and out. And there's the bell ending round number two. There you go. Take them out, that's a great shot showing you that cut. He's standing too much straight in front of me, which I don't want to Okay, you work in the jab perfectly, real nice, guys. Remember when I told you uno, dos? All right, yeah, one, two, three. Okay, no, it's, okay. it's a nip, it's a nip, don't worry about it. It's a nip, now listen. Uno, dos, all right? Here's that left hook Montel Griffin has. It's landing with regularity. Double jab. Jab, time the jab and slide it out. Mm -hmm. Ride it on your side. When you side, just step right around the side. Just want to step right around the side, okay? Next round. Give it a little more fight. No, give it a little more fight, and I want you to stop it. You know? Stop him in the center. Okay? Let's work. All right, we're set to go with round number three in this scheduled 12 round affair, IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. We're coming to you from Tianhe Stadium in Guangzhou and the Republic of China, the People's Republic of China. It's Rivera in the red with his back to you sliding around to the left, and Montel Griffin, former world champion, with his back to you now sliding to the left. And jabbing, and jabbing. He, he just gets that in there. There's a nice right hand and come back to push the body. Off, off oh, he really cracked him with that push right off, hand right on the ear. Stop, stop but he hasn't been able to shift the legs. A little bit uh, of a jellied like movement for one second, and then he's right back to the legs. He's all right. What a wild shots by Griffin. Both fighters missing some big punches with bad intentions on them. But Griffin's reflexes, again, are so quick that he is making Rivera miss so much and countering very well. Stop, 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 stop. You know, while the IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship may not mean a lot to many, it means a lot to these fighters that are in there tonight because it will lead to a shot at one of the three, considered the three big championships. Look at this, guys. Well, amazingly enough, the three big ones are all owned by one man, Roy Jones Jr., and maybe a trilogy will fill out and they get the third fight, the rubber match. We'll see what happens, and that's what this fight's all about. Right now, it's Griffin beating up on Rivera. Heads inside, come on. Continues to bang the body. Referee Bernardo Perfato from Niles, Ohio, right outside of Youngstown, Ohio, in the United States, doing a nice job. I can't for the life of me figure out why Rivera wants to get inside with those long arms and that long body. Why is he inside, which is Griffin's territory? Once he's inside, he's doomed. He really is compromising himself quite a bit by staying that close, Freddie. He can't get the leverage, he can't get the arms working in there, and he opens himself up to a lot of damage. Well, unless he goes to side-to-side -side movement, which apparently he's not, he's wide open for shots. And now he's bruised on top of his right eye as well as underneath. See, he's got a, a bruise under in eight, both eyes. I mean, now it's right and left and on top of the right eye. Griffin with total confidence now. As Rivera, who's just a really nice kid, tries to make a fight of this thing, but he's got the wrong fight plan tonight. Well, you know what? Griffin's starting to show less and less respect for Rivera's power, if, if he has any power, and he's leaping in with shots from the outside, big uppercuts and big hooks. Well, you know he wants to take him out, Bobby. He wants to shift him and make a big, big... But nice left hook! Wow, did he nail him that time! Beautiful right hand and a left hook coming right back, and what? Rivera walk right into it, staying stationary. Bobby, what's it do to a fighter when you nail a guy with a left hook like that and you don't shift him? Well, you know what? For some fighters, it might discourage them. And for other fighters, they'll just hit you. If you let them hit you, they'll hit you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. Well, it's building up. The punishment is building up. And you can see on Rivera's face, he doesn't have the answer for anything except to accept the punches on the head. All right, closing seconds of the third round. It's over. Go, 
talking about? We have to work this man, okay? Okay, we have to work on, come on. Take deep, take deep one, take deep. Come on, Jose, take deep. Take deep one, baby, come on, take deep ones. There you go. One more time, one more time, one more time. Now you got his number. Right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. There you go, baby. Now you got his number. Those excellent okay. reflexes, even going back, makes a punch go low, makes another one miss. Comes back with a left and a right. I told you, he's short and he hasn't got great reach, but he has incredible reflexes and good speed. He's one of those few guys that can beat you going backwards. And later, a little bit more of the same. Griffin's kind of waiting on him. There's a right hand and a left hook. Again, Rivera does not move his head. Walking straight in, squared Quarter. off. No defensive Quarter. angle side to side. Griffin just teeing off on him. Fingers down. Come up to round number four as the bell sounds, that thin, tinny-sounding bell, and round four is underway in the scheduled 12-round fight. Montel Griffin has been giving a boxing lesson to Jose Luis Rivera, and one question has been answered, Bobby. His defeat against Darius Mikuleski, it doesn't seem to be bothering him now. Well, you know, he was a little depressed about that fight, and also the second Roy Jones fight, he thought there were some shifty things that happened in, in leading up to the fight, so his mind, he said, was not settled. His body was okay. He needed time off to fix both. And evidently, he's fixed them. Well, Griffin put in three hard shots to the body, right in the middle of the midsection. That's kind of hurt. One of them a little bit low, too, for you, as I heard the referee, Bernardo Bravado, say, hey, keep him up, Montel, keep him up. He's doing a nice job of boxing this guy, and in spite of the fact that it's an unintentional low blow, it's still a foul. Uppercut inside the time by Rivera. Rivera bought a hundred Bibles in Chinese to give up. That's the kind of nice guy he is to the people here in the People's Republic. Did he really? He sure did, but this is a tough man business here. Nice straight right hand at time. You'll notice too, Griffin will throw a left hook or right hand up top and come back with either the same hand or the opposite hand to the body. Rivera looking a little sloppy now, Doc. He's doing his be the best he can, which isn't good enough. He's frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. And he hasn't certainly followed the advice of the corner, so he's left with what's happened to him his whole career. He takes a lot of punishment. He eats a lot of leather. He's a guy with 18 victories, though. He's had only two losses, one no contest. He's certainly a worthy opponent for Griffin for this title. He's ranked in the top 10 in the IBC. He's never been off his feet, although the stoppage was a cut. He still feels that without that cut, that fight he would have won, and that cut has never reopened or been a problem, but his face is busting up badly. Oh, there's a low blow. Now that's a low blow. Now that was really a low blow. He reacted to it, but more or less that it happened than it hurt him. Rivera ties him up, and then he throws a shot on the break. But the referee warns Griffin about holding. And Griffin said, I didn't do nothing. I got a hit. Guy, guy whacked me into the bell. Nice combination. There's a one-two left hook that time. Wow, with the right hand. The left straight left tails him. Right on top of that eye. Boy, oh boy, what's it take to shift this guy? His legs are still there. And that's the ref saying to him, you're hitting on the break as well. Both of them are hitting each other on the break. And not only hitting on the break, but as they get real close, they're hitting each other a little bit behind the ear toward the back of the head. Also could be a dangerous thing. Wow, with the left hook again. There's a low oh, blow now by Rivera. He's going to have to take some points away to stop this. No, he's giving a warning. Yeah, but he gave it to, to the wrong guy. He gave exactly. it to the guy got it. I mean, to the other guy. <laughs> Gee, There's the left hook by Montel. Counters it again with a straight left. And the bell ends round number four. A tough, hard fought round four. Okay. We have, we have to. All right. Hey, what's, hey, what's, what's, hey, what's, hey, go, 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 get out. You have to move that hip, by the way. You're going in with that jab. You're going in too straight, okay? You can't do that, Jose. Come on, bike. You're not putting nothing to practice. But it's okay. It's going to come along, but we need to pressure him. He started getting tired, okay? okay? So we have to pressure this man now, okay? If you're in there, work the three shots, okay? All right. <sighs> I want to see more right hand lead, Jose, okay? Now, you have to remember, we have to follow. That right hand, we have to follow with the hook. We're not working that hook. Let's try to double those shots, Jose, under there. Come on. They come together so often, and there's a lot of swinging behind the head, behind the ears, and hitting on the break by both fighters, as well as a little bit of low blows. All right, here we go, round number five. 
Bob Sheridan sitting in for Steve Albert tonight with your regulars, Dr. Freddy Pacheco and Bobby Chez. We're at the Harris Stadium in Guangzhou in the People's Republic of China. Montel Griffin through four, giving a boxing lesson to Jose Luis Rivera in the red trunks. This is round number five. And I have not given a round yet to Rivera. He's trying hard, but he's not making it. Griffin giving him a boxing lesson. He's ahead of this fight. Well, I've got a shutout too, Freddie. 40 to 36 through four in the 10-point must scoring system. That basically makes it unanimous, but I'll tell you what. Rivera's trainer just told him to go out there and use that jab and use it differently. Step to the side when you tell him don't come in straight. He ran out through five jabs, stepped to the side, threw some more, and actually, for the first time, compromised Montel Griffin just a little bit. Crowd came to life when he got the jab through. There's a couple of jabs, but they're short. If you're going to be short, you got to get that right hand flying right behind it if you're going to be effective. If you're short with a jab, you better be throwing something else because a guy like Griffin is going to come right through your jab. All right, stop. Stop for me. Step back. That's it. That's what it is. Listen, man. Nice pace to the fight. The guys are working hard. It's not a furious fight. It's kind of one-sided. It's a methodical fight is what it is. It's a methodical beating by Griffin. Rivera's still in the fight, but he's getting more than he's giving. Good body shot that time by Griffin. Griffin has that look of confidence in his face. At what stage, Bobby, when you're in a fight like this, when you know that you're in control, what you thinking in there as a fighter? Well, I'll tell you right now, I think Griffin believes he's won every round, as we have already said, that we think, but I think he feels in control so far. Rivera's been able to do nothing to hurt him, nothing to stop him, nothing to even stop him from getting hit, so I think he feels he's in control. I don't know when there's a point that he recognizes it any quicker than another, but he's doing a great job. He's had a history of hot-dogging it in some fights, but he hasn't done any of that at all here in China. Well, you know what? I'm not much on hot dogging, so I'm glad he's not doing it. Oh. Two real stiff jabs in there. Rivera tries to answer back, and he misses everything with the nice body movements of a Montel Ice Griffin. Oh, strong jab, strong jab by Griffin. One of the problems for Rivera is, too, is he's throwing one jab, one right hand at a time, and he's throwing them slowly. He needs to pump two, three jab step, and then fire right hand, hook, right hand. He needs six and seven punches at a time if he's going to start connecting with Griffin and compromise him at all. Notice that Griffin is uh, standing sort of just flat-footed in the center ring. Now he gets up on his toes and moves around, and Rivera is up on his toes sometimes, but when he stops and comes straight in is when he gets clipped. If he would move side to side, he'll circle to the right sometimes, then he won't go back to his left and throw the right hand. It's an easy guy to figure out if you're fighting him. Tries to be aggressive, but the bell's coming up to end round number five. He's slowing down a little bit right now, but you got to keep it up. Always keep your hands up a little higher, okay? Put your hands down here. You don't have to put your hands up a little higher and pick those shoes off. So you don't have to give him those. You don't have to give him those jabs. Oh, that's strong. Hey, he ain't okay. hitting you with nothing. With your hand, fellas. Listen, Griffin basically doing whatever he wants. Combinations. He, he can see the punches so easily from Rivera. His reflexes are so good. Rivera's so slow. Hits him, slips his punches, steps out at will, and then jumps back in and fires. There's another... <laughs> combination and a little bit of uh, frustration I guess he's holding him by a headlock and he's getting a little little pound to the ribs okay, let me see that one two to the chest like I told you follow with that hook okay if you go to the body come and double up to the head you see what I'm saying right. you're not doing those things that we work Order. come on Order. let's work them boy okay all right put it in put it in let's go let's go right. to the corners let's mm -hmm. go let's do that come on, all right come on let's go good job all right, this is round number six in the Schedule 12 round affair for the IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. I thought in the fifth round Griffin slowed down just a hair, or perhaps Rivera picked it up a, a notch. Nonetheless, we have to be concerned with that. We're approaching the halfway point in the Schedule 12 round affair. The last thing you want to see if you're a Griffin fan oh, stop, 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 is him to run out of gas. Wait, good play those for both you guys. Good job. Well, I thought at the beginning of the fifth round, Rivera came out a little more, with a little more purpose, a little better punches, combinations, and jabbing. And Griffin slowed a little bit, but then rallied very, very very well. And I think he rallied well enough to take the round and, uh, complete, and keep his shutout going. But at least Rivera's trying hard. I mean, you know, give the guy credit. He's, he's in there doing, doing what they're talking about. That's just slip. Referee right on top of that. Good uh, touch call by the referee. And I like to see when the referee stands back a little bit because then he can see the legs of the fighter. And this referee, Bernardo Profato, from outside of Youngstown, Ohio, knows exactly what he's doing in there. Six-round action. 
Yeah, and I'm left with a thought. That if, they, if, they, if they're trying to teach him new tricks, they sure picked a hard opponent to work out those tricks on. Couldn't they have picked an easier guy to, to work out new tricks? I think some of those tricks were specifically designed to, to be effective against this opponent. And not working, Bobby. No, they're not, not working. Well, they reported to us that it was going to be a sellout crowd, and because of the weather outside, it hasn't developed into that, but they should be still coming in, and you see them coming in in some of the uh, areas here, but uh, it's not quite the crowd they expected, and uh, that's a real situation that's a disappointment for the promoters because the weather was just absolutely horrible just as we were ready to go on the air. And they're, and they're really counting on a big crowd to, to put this show over and show what they can do in uh, China and the People's Republic of China, so I'm, I'm sure they're holding their breath. Well, the fact of the matter is they've sold the tickets. It's just that the crowd was unable to get here because of the situation. I had mentioned that there was monsoon conditions and the uh, fellas in the truck, uh, David Dickens and the boys said, hey, don't call it a monsoon, Colonel, because we'll have CNN on. I want to know what's going on over here. Okay, so it was bad, bad thunderstorms, and it has affected the crowd, but it hasn't affected the action in this fight. Griffin and Rivera making good accounts of themselves. Montel having it his way, though. Each and every round starting to be a repeat of the previous round. A big bomb now landing clean, two and three in a row by Griffin. Hey, Griffin, when he gets tired, leans on the guy's shoulder. He wants to load up that right hand. He comes with the left jab. Rivera able to tie him up. Closing seconds now. This is the sixth round. Griffin would love to have a lights out for him. There's the uppercut. Nails him with the right hand. Nice combination to end the round. Wow, what a nice finish to round number six. Here's what we have coming up for you and what the people here in China want to see. Layla Ali taking on Christina King and a women's super middleweight bout extraordinaire. The fame of uh, Layla Ali. This is her early in the week. This is the way they promoted her. The people didn't come to see anybody but this young lady, the daughter of Muhammad Ali. She signed autographs. She was very congenial to most people. The smiling face, a beautiful girl, the second youngest daughter of Muhammad Ali. And believe it or not, the people in China know her because, of course, of her father, the live crowd shot here again at uh, the Inner Stadium here in uh, Guangzhou. And the promoter said Ali is so huge here, not because of his boxing presence alone, but because of his anti-war sentiments made him such a hero here for the country. And that's a lot of people. Here we go, round number seven. Again, scheduled for 12. This is a championship fight in the light heavyweight division. That's the 175-pound division. Roy Jones, the king of the hill in that outfit. It's been a shutout so far for Montel Griffin. The point of no return is basically now and every minute hereafter for Rivera. He has to do something drastic. He has to win every round and have a knockdown or a knockout if he can even have a chance of winning this fight. Unless he gets very lucky, I don't see any chance. Get him up, Jose. Get him up. Get him up. Okay. This guy doesn't look like he's a very big puncher either. On top of all of his other things. When you take a look at his ring record, Freddie and Bobby, there's no really big names in there other than Antonio Tarver. And in that one, he was TKO'd by Tarver in the fourth round back in June of 1998. Tarver, of course, a great Olympic medalist and a real up and coming uh, fellow to be reckoned with in this division. Yeah, this is surely a big step up for him. He's fighting a very talented fighter who's got all the tools, a lot of experience, and right now he is not faring well at all. It's showing. But nonetheless, as a professional athlete and a professional prize fighter, he's working as hard as he can. And by golly, Bobby, you've been in difficult fights towards the end of your career when you know, well, I, 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 I'm just not going to be able to beat this guy and hit you. What drives you on? Well, some of it's just pure pride. I hate to lose. <laughs> Most fighters do, and if they don't, they should. Uh, second place is last place in boxing, and that is just not acceptable for most fighters. Well, Rivera is certainly one of those fighters because he's not having anything his way. He's had that cut below the eye going back to the second round. He had a pretty good fifth round, but still not good enough to win it. And other than that, it's been Montel Griffin doing about as he's wanted to do throughout the course of this evening. 
Oh, he's just giving him a systematic break. It doesn't look like he's opened up in order to knock him out. It doesn't look like the guard said, okay, go ahead, take him out. It's just he's getting a systematic beating. He just switched his up over there, too, and gave him a little different look. Did Griffin, and uh, wasn't real successful with it, but wasn't too bad. Come on, come on, let him pay at all has been hit with some pretty solid punches. As you take a look at the wide chain, you can see those legs a little bit heavy. He bangs the body, nails him again upstairs to the temple ball, closing seconds of the seventh round. Montel Griffin trying to end this thing in a hurry. I don't think he'll be able to do it this round as he finishes strong. Two more good shots ending the seventh round. And now he was going for a knockout. Now yes, he was going for it. A little better. Take some deep, Mumpai. Come on, take some deep, ones. There you go. Are you feeling? Yeah. How are you feeling? All right. Good, 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 good. good. It's a little better. You see what I'm saying? That's a little okay. better. That's a little better. See what I'm saying? That's a little better. Now, listen. Don't let this guy faint you, okay? Yeah. Martel team off on him early. This is where he first shook him up. He just waits and waits. There's a left hook that doesn't land real well, but he comes back with that left hook and really clobbers Rivera. Catches him coming in so cleanly, Rivera does not give the angles that he was supposed to and that we talked about earlier. Some nice body work by Griffin coming up top to the head again. There's another left hook that lands very clean, and I'll tell you what, this kid has got to move his head, Rivera. He's got he doesn't, doesn't seem able to because he doesn't seem to know how. He just It's just not in him to move his head. I don't think they're going to ever teach him to do that. All right, here we go. Round number eight in the scheduled 12-round oh, affair. Stop, stop, stop. And right now, okay, Griffin in the listen. process of just beating Jose Luis Rivera down. The closing all 30 seconds of the seventh we round were brutal we if you're a Rivera fan. And stop, much more brutal if you're a Rivera fan. You can see the door opening to the uh, possibility of this fight not going the distance if he fights like that, like, like the end of that last round. There goes. Uh, three great shots in a row. Wow, with a left hook down to finish it off. This kid is some kind of talk. He hangs in there, keeps plodding forward, Griffin trying to set up some sort of counter. So one of the problems for Rivera, when he makes Montel miss, he doesn't make Montel pay. When Rivera misses, Griffin makes him pay. Nice straight shot there, Bobby. Two, uh, one, two. He set him up and there, with the right hand. Oh. That's a soft plug A little bit overhand left clubbing. But he's going all out. He's going all out. Those are those are heavy punches. He hasn't been landing those kind of punches. Now he senses that he can end it. He wants to end it. He'd love to score a knockout here now. Put your hands. But don't forget, we're in the eighth round. This is an area that Rivera hasn't been too often in his career. In fact, as I look at his score sheet, he's been there twice in his very last fight, in which he won. And then you got to go way back to Rocky Gannon, actually Rick Gannon, they call him, in May of 94, before he's been any more than eight rounds. But on top of the fact, Bobby, that he hasn't been in this territory too often, he's been taking an awful beating throughout the fight. Well, he see, clearly seems to be well conditioned. He's, he's very game. His chin has been shown to be solid, but he's just not performing. He's not executing. He's not being the technician that they put the plan together for him to be. He's just not executing. He cannot do it. Well, coming straight forward is not the fight plan that you should have for this guy. And he's not using side-to-side -side movement. His corner is very pleased with the fact that he's hanging in there, but they have got to realize that this guy is just going to take a worse beating as the rounds tick by here now. Nice straight left hand bounces off the nose of Rivera. Oh, hit on the break again. Hit on the break. Go, go. I just warned him, all right? He, he just warned him. He said, I just warned you not to hit on the break. Two nice jabs again. Digs to the body. Heads. One thing you notice, sorry, Bobby, inside of 30 seconds ago, go ahead. I'm sorry, one thing you'll notice with Griffin, even as many clean shots he lands to the head, he never forgets the body. He always leaves a couple of body shots for you, for you to remember him by. This is an example right there, what Bobby was talking about. He hooked, then he came with the uppercut. He was looking for the body, but uh, Rivera able to smother him by grabbing on. Stop! Stop! 
the same thing again. Come on. Closing seconds now. This is the eighth round of a scheduled 12 round championship fight. Oh, come on, come on, Guys, let me work here on my phone. You boys, buddy. Right? You boys, you boys. There you go. Now you pressure a little bit. No, I'm saying. I want to see a little bit more power than that, okay? Come on. You can do it, okay? Come on. Big ones. Big ones. Big ones. Key, hmm? give me some water, please. Big ones. Come on, buddy. Shorter man out jabbing, taller man with reach. There's a missed right hand, nice slipping, and there's a jab. Just stuff it. There's another jab. There's a hook off the jab. A wild right hand and a wild missing left hook. Shorter man being more effective, using his speed and stepping. You watch him, he steps in each and every time. There's another look at it from a little closer. Stepping with that jab, Corners. cutting the distance down and being very effective and very accurate. And that's why he's pitching a shot. And I have it exactly a shot off 8072 on my scorecard. That's unofficial. The judges, Paul Silverman from Pittsburgh, Ronald Greenlee from Bensalem, Pennsylvania, and Joe O'Neill from Philadelphia will do the official scoring if it goes all the way. We're in round number nine in this championship fight, and it's been all Montel Griffin, but it hasn't been a bad fight because Rivera is some kind of tough. He hasn't been down. He's only been visibly slightly shaken once, maybe twice, and that's about it. Griffin's hit him with everything. He opened up a cut in the second round. The eyes are starting to close, but Rivera keeps plodding forward as Griffin continues to pound the head and body. Stop, stop, stop! Rivera's not making Griffin miss anything. Everything Griffin throws practically is landing on something, even if it just gloves into Rivera's face or Rivera's face or head or his body. Everything is absorbing punishment. Bobby, you know if you don't move your head coming in, you can't slip punches, and he doesn't do much of that. Little side to side every once in a while, like now, but he's not engaging. As soon as he gets ready to engage, he drops his hands and comes in with his head and he gets wide. Part of his problem, too, is, uh, Bob, that when he bends over, he bends right into Montel's punches. He bends into Griffin's best stuff coming up with the uppercut to the rising hook and the right hand, and he compromises his height and his reach and everything. In doing that, I just don't understand it. He just got warned by the referee for using his head as well. I, it wasn't that flagrant, but he got warned anyway. Well, the referee's given a lot of warnings in this fight because we have had a few low blows, and now the head's coming together. On the whole, I think he's doing a very good job. Oh, nice little dab that caught uh, Griffin finally. But Griffin right away pretty counter punches him inside. And watch how he gets out of the corner. Hey, straight, break, oh. me stop. Right back, no, There's two things you can do. You can either slide down the ropes or grab the man and spin him and get out. Head. And see, this is a situation where he grabs and spins. And that's how to get out of there. Let the referee separate you. Let the referee help you. That's an experienced fighter. Oh, shut down. Okay. And remember, prior to this fight, we said the book on Jose Luis Rivera was a lot of desire. This is a big step up in class. And will he be able to give the fight of his life, the performance of his life? Because that's what it would take if he's going to win this title from Griffin. And he hasn't been able to. Because Griffin, look at him, just teeing off on him, doing about as he pleases. Speed, one of the biggest factors in this fight. Montel Griffin is just so quick. He's hard to hit. We talked about that earlier defensively. He is almost impossible to hit clean two times in a row. And right now, Rivera's having trouble hitting him once. Yeah, the frustration is really showing, the registering on his face. Rivera's trying everything he knows how, and he's just not getting in there. And, and in return, he's getting popped. There's a nice jab, just to show you. Oh, where's he fit in the uh, scheme of things? He's fought uh, Mikulczewski, as we said, Lou DeValle, Reggie Johnson, Russian Johnny, Michael Lund's in there, Harding's in there, Antonio Tarpa's right now, and David Telesco as the bell ends round number nine. Stadium here in Guangzhou in the People's Republic of China. Normally they play basketball and volleyball in here. They even play badminton in here, we found out. And look at there, there's a young Chinese fan. No, not one. This is she, A beautiful little child. Hello there. Make the miss, count him. You see what I'm saying? I'm not doing none of that. 
You got an excellent job. Water, a lot of water. You got an excellent job. A lot of water, squeeze it hard. You got an excellent job, but you are, you are not far away with that job, pai. Okay, you're not working the body the way you're supposed to. The body? See, you got three hands, you got two hands. Okay, the corner. let's work. Okay, pai, come on, you have to give it all. Okay, if you really want it. Boy, no panic in the corner at all. He said, you got to give a little bit more if you really want it. Pretty good advice there, Freddie. Yeah, except uh, that uh, the door is closed. I mean, the cows have already left the bar. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Rivera's trainer, Oscar, and I go back almost 30 years, 20-some-odd years. When I first started boxing, when I was very young, he knew me when I weighed, when I weighed less than 100 pounds. Ooh. He knows the game, he knows the business, but he also knows his fighters. I think he realizes his fighters just slightly outmatched. The strategy's not working. He's trying to inspire him to do whatever he can and maybe pull out push up, push the up golden key. Well, we've seen it happen before in other fights. Whether it'll happen tonight, we'll find out in these next three rounds. But I'll tell you this. In fairness, I want to say Rivera is some kind of tough because he has been taking a boxing lesson tonight. His face is blown up. It's really busted up. He had a cut going way back to the second round, and we want to give the corner. Uh, Keith uh, Spangrick does the uh, corner in there, and he does a nice job uh, handling the cuts, and he's kept this one closed, although it's very pumpy. Not only under the eye, but beside it, and both eyes are just about closed. Come on, show you the man. Fast for him. It's just too fast. Actually, I hate to say it, he's out of class. It's a, they're almost in a different class, these two fighters. They are in a different class. There's no, no fear of saying it, Doc. They, they're in a different class. We knew it was a step up. Sometimes when guys step up in class, they, they reach that pinnacle. Sometimes they can't. For Rivera, he can. He's not going to be a top 10 uh, light heavyweight, and he's going to find that out as the result of this fight comes up. Barring some sort of wild thing that could happen at the end of the fight. Who knows? As we, as we know, anything can happen about it. It doesn't look like it will. Get him up, get him up. Not at all. Not the way Griffin is landing hooks and wild shots. What you're looking at, Montel Griffin has exceptional speed, and Roy Jones Jr. is faster than that. I really would love to see the third match between those two guys. First fight ended very funny. Uh, clearly, you know, a, a two-punch foul that Roy, I'm sure, didn't mean to throw. And then the second fight, a blowout of Griffin. And there were some circumstances surrounding that for Griffin, at least, or so he said. So I would love to see that third fight. Well, you very well may see it if he wins this title tonight, but it certainly appears that he's going to. Okay. I wish Roy would, would get into his career and fight more, don't you? I mean, here's his, maybe the best fighter fighting, and he just won't fight enough fights or good fights. I'd like to see this guy show us his stuff. Oh, nice. Man, he makes him pay. Rivera tries to do something good, tries to move ahead, tries to... Oh, the referee just got in there. There's a Bobby, cut on... I can see what you mean about protecting yourself at all times. And a cut on Martel Griffin's left eye. That's what, that's what he's mad at. He, he said, oh, look at this. Now I got a cut. I loaded up the right hand in there. He's cut. And that's why you have to fight all the rounds. Contact's the in there. Griffin working real nice, setting this guy, he's, he hears a lead hook and a nice, beautiful right uppercut following. See, he's not one at a time, whereas you've seen Rivera throw one or two at a time. His hands are speed, he sets first combinations, right hand, it goes right to the body with the left hook, another right hand to the body, and he comes up top, working head and body in combination, keeping Rivera off balance, keeping hands in his face. Stay on the outside of it this time, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a very little cut. That's almost nothing. Use your legs a little bit. Take a little bit. And give, it, give it a little Up time. Up here, a little bit go, better. Okay? Right there is good. Good meaning bad. It's a... But you're, you're only got two rounds to go. That's not going to affect this fight. Well, there's like two cuts there, Freddie. The one yeah, that you're looking one. at, there's a little slit to the, the left just above the eyebrow, but there's a big one uh, in, in, the, in the eyebrow. eyebrow yeah. yeah, that's what I have. The one I said that was good, meaning bad. Oh. 
Well, he certainly could afford to play it safe from here on out. He's got every single round on our scorecard. His corner must know that. The last thing he wants to do is have this thing get stopped. But of course, if it uh, with an accidental headbutt, if it was stopped now, it would go to the scorecards anyhow. So it's really academic. I can't imagine that the scorecards are much different from ours. That couldn't be, Bobby. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, look, look at all the blood in that gun. Three of the officials, by the way, are from the United States. Joseph O'Neill from Philadelphia. Ronald Greenlee from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. And Paul Silverman from Pittsburgh, PA. All in the United States of America. Well, look at that cut has energized Rivera. He's really fighting about one and a half times faster than he did before. He's having his best round so far. Yeah, he's, he's like said, oh boy, look at this. Maybe I can get this open and stop this fight. Meanwhile, Griffin has nailed him right on top of his cut right below his left eye. And the blood's coming down. We got a bloodbath in the ring right now. But you know, Griffin was cruising along. He said anything can happen in a fight. All of a sudden, bang, the heads come together. And we got a real bad cut now. Oh, he loaded up the right hand. We've been getting a little tired, showing a little bit of signs of fatigue, throwing and leaning in and holding, throwing two big bombs and leaning in and holding. That sometimes is a sign of fatigue. I don't know whether it's from frustration or he's got an adrenaline flow, but Rivera has picked up the pace here in round 11. That cut is ignited and he lands a light shot to the right side of the head. And another one on the left side, here he comes in. And now look at Montelli, puts his head down and comes up. Now every time Rivera comes in, Montelli's putting his head down. He's trying to protect that uh, cut, I'm sure. Well, with just about a minute to go, this Rivera might actually be winning this round. Still a lot can happen in 55 seconds. And Montel appears to be a little uh, fatigued. Clips him with a short left hand there. Loads up the right hand. Snaps the head back, and Rivera doesn't know what it means to quit. This kid's got some kind of courage. He's got some kind of heart. He just keeps coming forward and just keeps getting beat. Uppercut inside. Nice job by Bernardo Profano to keep this thing under control. There's been a lot of fouls in this fight. And he's got it pretty much under control. Right, left, wide right hand. Both guys flailing inside, nailing each other behind the head. 20 seconds to go in the 11th round. Griffin up in front, but Rivera having a good round. Nails him inside. Wild again with a shot with the right hand. This is basically a survival mode right now for Griffin. Not really doing that much. Doesn't really have to. This is like a kitten that you taunt in the corner. Step back, step you bother back, him enough and the guy breaks up, and that's what's happened with Rivera. Closing seconds of the 11th round, and a good round for Rivera. Maybe the only round he's won in this fight, but he's certainly won it. He outworked him. Okay, uh, touch it and come out. Last round, touch and step back, okay, Mark? Yeah. Come on, come on, baby, come on, come on. We have to go for broke, okay? We right. definitely have to go for broke. Don't give him nothing, baby. On, you show me you can stop this fight now if you really want it, okay? You hurt him badly. You didn't follow much. We have to do it now, okay? Quarter. It's now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's the so last round, partner. Okay. okay. I'm cool, man. How are you doing? I'm cool. Boxing this ring sticks. Stay off the ropes. Okay? I gotta find Don't him. Let him get no punches. Okay. Don't give him nothing. Come on, baby. Try it. I don't want to get it. All right, we're set to go for the 12th and final round of this IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship. Montel Griffin way out in front of the crowd. Listen to the crowd. They finally get into it. Whoa. The crowd, which is finally filling in a little more, a little more each time. I'll tell you what, they're they're enjoying it. Yeah, you know, they, they'll come in when, when uh, it's become a battle now. You know, now they're looking at a battle. Look at this guy, Rivera, no quit in him. Way behind in the scorecards unofficially. Montel loads up the left, comes back with a cracky right hand, and another left hand. Inside Rivera, Brendan. We got us a pair of sixer all of a sudden. What a combination by Griffin, and he loaded up. Boy, did he land. Help, 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 help. But it was cruising along with Griffin just rolling along. We mentioned all he has to do is survive the last couple of rounds. All of a 
sudden, we've got a war on our hands. Rivera came to life in the 11th after he cut with a headbutt Griffin in the 10th round. And now here in the 12th, he's a house of fire all of a sudden. There's absolutely no quitting Rivera. He has come to fight for real. He wants a piece of Montel Griffin. Even if he doesn't win this fight, he wants to get his pound of flesh. And uh, we can answer the question. He's never been beyond eight. He's not doing bad in 11. And he's hanging in there in 12 pretty good, too. Montel using everything in his arsenal and his bag of tricks to hang in there and don't get hurt. Angelo Dundee just say hit and don't get hit. That's what he better do for the last few seconds of this fight. But Griffin is, is exacting his toll. He is not forgiving him anything. As, as he comes in, he gets hammered. The, uh, the intensity is all on Rivera's part, but Griffin's doing all the boxing. Another big right hand by Griffin. That left eye of Rivera's is, I mean, that is really getting ugly. That's closing almost completely. It's, it's only a slip there. Bangs him again. He knows what to do. He's staying away. Goes with the right hand lead. Ties him up. Making the seconds tick off the clock. Coming up to the one minute remaining mark here in the fight. It's been all Griffin. Maybe one round to Rivera. And try as hard as he might. He's losing this one as well as Rivera of this round. The 12th. But you know, for a one-sided fight, Freddie, it turned into a pretty entertaining fight at the end. At Look the at very this. end. At the very end, it's become a fight. Okay, break for me, break. Step your home, you're holding this. Oh, my God. Well, when you get one guy with a lot of class and another guy trying to step up, the one thing you've got to continue to mention, I've said it a couple of times, and you folks watching around the world, you know Rivera's got tons of heart. Griffin just said, oh, my God. <laughs> when the referee said, you guys are, are pulling each other, he goes, oh, my God. Not showing too bad a chin either. His heart is proportionate to his chin. He's got a great chin and great heart. And a nice job that both corners, both cut men in tonight's fight, keeping these guys who are busted up pretty good in the contest. Closing seconds of the fight. The crowd comes to life. And it's all over. And you know, Bobby, I have to agree with you. He deserves the third shot at Roy. Then let's go out and, and decide who wins, uh, who wins uh, the last the rubber match. It would be a good, entertaining fight. By the way, unofficially, I've got a 119-109. Exactly. We'll see what the judges have it when uh, we have the opportunity to uh, collect the scorecards, and Jimmy Lennon will uh, give us the announcement. Well, all in all, while it started out kind of slow, uh, Griffin was in command, giving a good boxing lesson through the middle uh, rounds. It was uh, uh, began to... Well, you just began to understand that this was Griffin's night and that the step up in class was a bit too much for Rivera to handle. But towards the end, it became a war, Bobby. Well, towards the end, it became a Donnie Brook style fighting. They were, they were both in there, a lot of roughhousing. Elbows were flying, not necessarily on purpose. Heads clashing. It was a rough, rough time for both of them. Yeah, we got by almost out of the fight, but I don't have to worry about it. But I thought maybe we could stitch his head. Wait, wait. For Griffin, he hasn't really had any anxious moments up until this point here where head slam and cuts open. They're both, yeah, you know, Rivera just duck, duck, dives his head down as he usually does, and Griffin comes into him, they bang heads. You see him walk away and start wiping his eyebrow, and that's where the cut was. Hey, I well, after that, Rivera got a lot of heart because it uh, certainly brought him right back into the fight, and he had his best round in the fight in the 11th round. He came on very, very strong, and what does that do, Bumpy? I mean, when you see that you cut a guy, even though it was a headbutt, it certainly gave him an adrenaline flow, no question in my mind. Well, generally speaking, cuts do that. You know, you see a cut, you think that maybe you have an opportunity to pull something out and stop the guy, but knowing that it was called and declared an accidental headbutt, and you're behind, you, you have to throw everything you have at him anyway because he had nothing to lose. Well, let's a sign of a fighter who's able to do that and wants to do that. Jimmy Lennon and the Chinese ring announcer Kevin Kong are gathering the scorecards and as soon as they're set, we'll be set to make it official. Again, unofficially, I had it scored 119 to 109. And Just so did about Ferdy. Shut out. Ferdy had it the same way. And, and that makes it a three-ring circus. <laughs> okay, so we had a unanimous decision anyhow. I see our announcers have moved into place, and Jimmy Lennon is set now. So let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judging ringside, Joe O'Neill scores about 117 to 111. Judge Greenlee scores about 118 to 110. And Judge Paul Silverman scores about 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner and the new IBC light heavyweight champion, Montel Ice Griffin. Well, the judges had it almost exactly the way we had it. Judge uh, Paul Silverman had it a uh, complete shutout, and I wouldn't argue with him either. No, I couldn't argue with the complete shutout. I could argue with 117, 111, though. That I can argue with. I could actually argue with that vehemently. <laughs> yeah, I could too. But when the three judges had it right, that makes it good. There's no question. We saw Montel Ice Griffin win the IBC World Light Heavyweight Championship here, and we saw it in Guangzhou, China, and the People's Republic of China. And it's a thrill for all of us to be here, and we certainly hope that it's as big a thrill for you people around the world. Here it is, Guangzhou, China, and the People's Republic of China. Coming up next, Layla Ali and Christina King. Women's super middleweight action. Layla Ali, a huge star here in the People's Republic of China. There she is in a dressing room getting warmed up. She's a pretty looking thing. If she can fight as good as she looks, she'll have a great night tonight. Hey, I'm still. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco was standing by in the ring now with our winner, so let's go to the fight, Dr. Ferdy, take it away. Well, I was close to a shutout, a boxing lesson. Did you think this guy had presented any kind of a problem? You seemed to have solved everything. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks for Showtime for putting me back on the map. American champion, Theo Torrance, Tim Griffin, my man Mark Phillippe at UNLV. But uh, to answer your question, it was a shutout. I don't think I lost more than one or two rounds. It just, most people probably think I was stupid to take a fight like this. I, I've been off since August. I hadn't been in the gym or nothing, yes, but I just focused my mind. I said, this is the second part of my career. I've been through a lot of setbacks the last two or three years, and I'm just going to turn around from here. The cut. Yeah, uh, well, we had hair butter about five or six times. I guess the referee didn't think it was bad, but uh, I don't think he did on purpose, but I'm 5'7". So I got to jump up the head somebody. So he's coming down at me. We well, clash heads in the 10th round. Now Bobby and I uh, kept mentioning that the third fight is almost a mandatory for you and Roy. You, you think you could get one in the next year. Roy doesn't seem to want to fight anybody. Well, right you, now, you get him? The right yeah. now, he on top of the world. Now, 20 years from down the line, we never fight again. It's still one-to-one. -one. But he got all the fans. He got all the people. So all I could do is keep winning and keep getting the people behind me. Like I said, I was rusty. I've been off for eight months. I talked to Tava. It kind of threw me out because I seen the fight, and he knocked him out in the fourth round. So I was trying to get him out of there. But he was tough. He talked some good, you know, took some good punches. So uh, we're just going to take it from here. All right. All right. Uh, coming over here to China, was it uh, an unusual experience, or was it just another, once the bell rings, just another fight? No, uh, it was a good experience. I mean, who could say they've been to China? I'm only 29 years old. I've been around the world. So uh, I feel real good. It just, we got the scale so late at the end of the week that I really didn't know how much I weighed, so I was a little overweight. <laughs> I had to lose the weight. But it really wasn't no. no. no uh, you gave us an entertaining fight. I, I guess a game like guy, but he was outclassed. Okay, thank it's you very much. Right. Thanks so much. And now back to the Colonel and Bobby at ringside. Now, for those of you with Internet access, we invite you to log on to SHO.com and chat with Johnny Tapia at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. He'll be discussing his upcoming title defenses against Pedro Javier Torres on May 6th, as well as tonight's fight. SHO.com is the home of online scoring, complete fighter bios, live chats, and so much, much more. Once again, that address is SHO.com. Now let's go back up to the ring with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Doctor? All right. We're sitting here with a gentleman who hatched this wonderful event in China. How they did it, I don't know. <laughs> but here, here are the two guys that did it. And uh, Anthony, I, I want to, to ask you how in the world you go about doing this. Well, it was a lot of willpower and a lot of determination. I know that all the logistics are against us. We have visa problems. We get custom problems. We have uh, just a lot of problems that we haven't encountered before because uh, this is an event of this magnitude. Uh, but we're very glad to have the support of the IBC of Showtime. Also, we partner up with Evander Holyfield and his attorney, Mr. Jim Thomas. Well, we're going to get to Thomas in a minute. That's Anthony Jan. But, but you know, George, George Cheng, 
Where do you go from here? You've got this. You've done this. I mean, this is really an accomplishment to get in here. Now what? Are you, you're inside. Are you going to go to Beijing? Are you going to Hong Kong? What happened? Well, the amazing thing was up until a few days ago, I had people call me saying, you guys are in China. This thing's not going to come off. And, and well, that's it, boxing. That's <laughs> boxing. But the amazing thing is we did. And I think it's a testament to the vision of Showtime and Jay Larkin and his team to allow us to, to bring an event like this. American Champion is a content provider for both Internet, television, and family programming. It's our goal to bring sports worldwide but especially here in Asia. Obviously, we got the genetics, right? Well, and, and where we're going to go from here, I think where we're going to go from here is to take it to the next level. And the next level well, is bringing big fights in. And I, I, well, I would, I would like to, no, don't take away my introduction. Let me introduce him. Here's Evander Holyfield's jump man who, without his help, this all couldn't have come about. And remember, this came about in about two months. It's, and in, you're Four looking weeks. at a miracle. <laughs> the miracle uh, I'm maker. happy to be a part of this. I'm happy was, Evander was able to be a part of this. Um, Evander, you know, is I'm really here in two capacities, as consultant to uh, American uh, Champion Entertainment and also uh, as Evander's representative because he's interested in exploring the possibility of coming over here and I wanted to see if this could Evander be is, <laughs> is, would come over here and fight? Evander Holyfield would come sure. to China and fight? Sure he would. Evander loves the sport of boxing and he'd like to be able to take it to the biggest population in the world and uh, it, I, I was skeptical myself. People told us for years the conventional wisdom was that a, a televised bout can't be done in China. Well, there's one company out there that can do it. I think their unique uh, resources was able I, I to do this I thank all up. three of you for doing this. This is a, a historic first, one of my first, to be in China with a fight. Jim Thomas, I thank you. You know how to bow for And George, you know and I, th I bow. I bow to, <laughs> to all three of you. I, I got to say, too, I got to add my own personal thanks to all the Showtime people, they Jay Larkin amazing. in particular, but they work so they hard and vision, so well. And they were amazing. Well, Jay is the guy that got the guts. <laughs> I don't know what puts that guy together, but he gets them together. So let's go back to the, uh, well, a guy with a lot of guts, the Colonel and Bobby Chess.